Hello everybody. I have used the same USB Wi-Fi adapter for the last two years. While it's an easy way to quickly get internet on your non-wireless computer, it does come with many disadvantages and like mine, they will eventually stop working. Now I could have bought another USB adapter or maybe even try one of these power line adapters that let you use your home's electrical wiring to have wire internet access through your outlets. But these also come with their own disadvantages and there is no denying that using a physical wire is always best but not always easy to do. In this video I will show you how you can neatly route your ethernet cable so that it is not running across your house. I will be using the baseboard to have the cable run on top of it and somewhere along the wall, preferably in a location not noticeable, it will pass through the wall into the next room where I will route it around the door trim and to my computer. First thing I will do is measure how much cable I need to buy the appropriate amount. Starting with the height of my modem, which has a second port available to tap into. From here, I will simply follow the baseboard and continue to measure each segment. Always round up when measuring as it's not a bad idea to have plenty of cable left over. Make sure to calculate the distance of your computer and measure the height that the cable needs to reach. I decided to go with 50 feet of category 6 cable, but ask your service provider or the store assistant to help you choose the correct one. I strongly suggest you get cable with a round sleeve as I find it easier to route around the corners. I recommend using a stud finder to help you avoid making a hole on top of a stud. If you don't have one, you can use a small nail to check for them. You will also need a tool like this drywall saw to make the hole for the cable to go through. I suggest something at least 5 inches long to pierce through both sides of the drywall. You will also need some kind of filler to seal up the holes made and this can also help you adhere the cable to the baseboard for a longer lasting or more permanent fix. And you might also need some staples for the cable. I recommend you use painter's tape to help protect the head of the cable as you feed it through the hole on the drywall and not damage the connector clip. And finally, it will help to have something rigid to help pass the cable through the wall as the cable is too soft and pliable. I'll start routing the cable from the room the modem is located. I have plenty of cable so I will make sure to have at least a foot or two of extra cable just in case I ever need to move the modem. I will be placing the staples every 16 inches to help secure the cable, but later in the video I will show you how you can create a more permanent bond to the baseboard. I will go past this corner, but you might ask yourself why not pass the cable through the wall now and continue on the other side. The simple answer is that there is a stud on the corner of the drywall and this is a highly visible corner so I do not want to create a hole here. I'm making my way around the baseboard but I will stop adding staples when I get to the place I will feed the cable through the wall. Now before I make the hole I will check with my stud finder. If you do not have a stud finder use a small nail and test a few inches away from the corner. Before I feed the cable through, I unravel the rest of the roll to make it easier to pass through and not get it tangled up. Try to make a decent sized hole so that the head of the cable can easily pass through without applying too much force as this can damage the connector. You will need to attach something rigid enough to help you pass the cable through as you are very unlikely to push it through by itself. Now I can start fitting the cable through the wall. Make sure to also pull on the other side to avoid getting the cable tangled. Once I get all the cable fed through, I can attach the remaining staples. I continued to run the cable around the door, but I didn't like how the cable would look like if I placed the staples here. You can see on the other side that the cable has a lot of slack and it is separated from the door trim. One idea I have to improve the look on this side is to permanently attach the cable to the door trim using silicone. You do not need to use a lot of it. A small bead of material will be enough 
and I will substitute the staples with blue painter's tape to keep the cable in place while the silicone sets in. Now that I have the silicone out, I will fill in those holes I made. If you made a really big hole, you can try to partially fill it once and then wait for it to dry a little bit and fill it up the rest of the way so you don't have to waste too much material. I also decided to go back and add some silicone to the cable running on the baseboard as it would create a better look if I can get rid of the staples. But this is completely optional and you may not want to permanently adhere the cable. Again, you do not need a lot of material. If I ever want to pull this cable out, it should not take a lot of effort to detach, but it will also not fall off by itself. The next day I removed the tape I used against the door trim to hold the cable as the silicone dried. I think I prefer this here instead of having the staples running down the side of the door. I also went ahead and removed most of the staples I initially used to hold the cable in place as it is now attached with a silicone. You can barely tell the cable is there now and it blends really well to the baseboard. I hope this video has been helpful to you if you are looking to route your own ethernet cable. Let me know in the comments what you think or if you have any questions. Please subscribe to my channel as well as give it a thumbs up if you enjoy the material. I greatly appreciate it.